what made you decide that it was time to to put a book together yeah and what okay. was like the purpose behind that if you will okay <laughs> okay so i'll be honest with you so um i i yeah i i was publishing a magazine yeah. right it was a quarterly magazine the african professional that was quite broad based and um uh, yeah, I mean, the, the magazine business depends on people buying advertising and the type of people who are advertising in the book being airlines, you know, money transfer agents, those kind of people are all challenged. I mean, they all mm. due to, to just not just COVID, but just the economy, you know, just going down now that we're in South Africa. Um, and then I was looking at a way of leveraging my skills because I've always been writing about stuff. So I have the ability to write. Um, it's something that I, that's always piqued my interest. I even went and did further studies in that regard. I went to WITS, you know, uh, the university did creative writing, financial journalism, went on a fellowship sponsored by Bloomberg to the US, you know, to just hone my skills in that. So financial journalism is something that is of interest to me because it combines, you know, your creativity, your ability to write and so on and your uh, accounting knowledge, right? So what I've studied. So I wanted to pub- self-publish a book mm. uh, about uh, CFOs, you know, basically the people who are the, you know, you can call them the peak. They are the pinnacle of yes. um, accounting. I mean, the next step once you're a CFO is probably to become a CEO of, a, of an entity. Yeah, so I wanted to self-publish and I, I interviewed a few uh, CFOs. There was also a selfish reason towards that because when you interview the CFO, like you, when you're interviewing me now, we develop a personal understanding over the next yeah, yeah. And then afterwards, you know, I know Yvonne, you stick in my yeah. head. Want, these people will stick in my head and I'll tell them, you know, by the way, I'm an IFRS expert, you know, um, if you yeah. would like here are the range of services that I can provide you know I'm I'm your guy and I have them on on WhatsApp and so on and you know I can whenever I hear on the news that they're doing a transaction they're buying another entity yeah. like, do you need someone to come and do your IFRS yeah. there yeah right. so that's the reason for the 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 book and then thereafter I sent the manuscript just you know uh, I had a I have a friend who um, publishes who's published a couple of of her books I asked her if she can put me in touch with publishers. I sent the script to them. They loved it and oh, yeah, awesome. so took up the project and it turned out to be something totally different from what yeah. I thought it would be initially. Yeah, I thought I was going to just self-print, you know, some 200 copies and, uh, you know, hand yeah, them. Yeah. but now it's something that's on Amazon, on eBooks, in the stores and so on. So yeah, stick- yeah. I saw a photo you posted the other day. It's, was that in exclusive books? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was like, wow. Awesome. Exclusive books, you know, Santon City, richest square mile in Africa. They're a big store. There. And look, you know, my book and my name there in the shelf next to awesome. the. Did you, did you go <laughs> in there and like move them around so that it was like front and center? Did you go and like. <laughs> you want to be thrown out. No. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. It's so awesome. When you put like, when you put up the photo, I was like, that's, uh, that's really cool. That's, that's really like, well done. That's yeah. an amazing achievement. Well, the idea that you know you're building you know, and, and enhancing your network mm-hmm. that way is really smart and it's really valuable yeah. when you go into someone you know when you send someone an email and you're asking for something from them like mm-hmm. can I get business there's generally yeah. a little bit of a wall but there if you start that conversation with like I want to chat to you because I think yeah. you have value and I want to make it about you yeah um you know, right. it's a it's a much smoother way and it's a much easier way to build up that relationship that you know may yeah. or may not turn you know turn into something some of these people like contacted on linkedin you know so yeah and then you, you know the number of people who connect with you on linkedin and then send you some sales pitch i mean you don't even read it <laughs> like exactly. and it's exactly. like a copy paste thing so yeah. mine is very simple it was just two lines you know hi dean uh, uh this is Casey I'm a CA I want to I'm writing a book yeah. and I'll interview you full stop yeah. You know? um, yeah. yeah and then they're like oh and then they look at your profile and then okay all right seems Maybe. someone I can do something with and then mm-hmm. yeah, there it develops and then now it's someone that you have now on 
Yeah, I mean, you've got like your little your little go to list. Considering the chapters, you know, the chapters in your book are structured. Um, you know, each chapter is a different CEO from like CFO. Sorry, yeah, from CFO. like mm. all of those companies. You know, you know, these are not companies that someone's like, who's that? You yeah, know, never heard of them. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you have a pretty impressive network of of people to to kind of you know to kind of go back to. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> very awesome. The question, obviously, people are going to be asking, are you making money off of this? Yeah. So, so can you, like, I mean, no. are we buying helicopters or, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> are we paying for, yeah. like, school fees? Kind of, like, what's the range you know, here? You know, yeah, I, I'm actually having this interview from my yacht. Um, in the, <laughs> uh, we are, we are, <laughs> my boat's on the, on the uh, I'm in Monaco at the moment. Anyway. <laughs> Clearly not. Um, so look, for you to make it as, to retire as an author, I think you need to be, a, you know, a Wilbur Smith type person who, because um, how, how a publishing contract works is that there's so many people who need to eat when a book is sold. So mm. buy my book, I don't know how much you paid for it on eBooks. Maybe you paid $10. I think it was about the, 12, the, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, the author will be like, it will be lucky to get $2 out of it, you know? Right. So it's a publishing is really a, a numbers game. So you, one, you need to write a book. The book needs to sell a lot. And then you need to write another book and another book and another book. So, you know, um, yeah. and there needs to be quantity. It's all about quantity. You know, it's a product. The more of the product that you sell, the more you make out of it, right? You will make some money when you write a book, but I, I don't think that you... Uh, writing a book is if money is your number one motivation the chances of you being disappointed are quite high yeah right. because if i look at um the the time spent yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. versus the uh the payback from the book itself in terms of selling the book yeah it's quite low yeah. but the intangibles that come that are associated with writing the book mm -hmm. I, you know so the idea that you're a published author, what yes. it does for your profile. Yeah. Um, people now believe, begin to think that you're a person who, you know, is an expert in whatever it is that you do, yeah. the connections that you make, the publicity that you get. You know, uh, for me, like also being an accountant, running a consultancy, the business that I, I, I've already got, I've got some business from some top 40 listed entities in, in on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, which I would not have got if I didn't go and interview the CFO 100%. of that company. Yeah. So bestseller status in South Africa is 5,000 copies, you know? Really? That's quite yeah. low. That's very, That's very low. low. Very low. I mean, if you think about the New York Times and those, they, yeah. they are talking, you know, I mean, if you've not sold a million copies, then let's, let's not have a, a waste book. of paper. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. now we, we, the realities are, that people are buying less and less of books. So if you sell yeah. five, then wow, you've, you've hit yeah. the mark um, in terms of African African standards. So, yeah. and I mean, if you think, you can just do the math. Uh, the good thing, I mean, it's a, it's a lifetime income. So if you write something mm. that, and a book is a, is a permanent thing, you only mm. do it once and you're done, you know? Uh, and if it's timeless information, yes. things like strategies, for success, I mean, people wrote like the Porter's, uh, uh, you know, uh, ways of building a strategy, and all these books that have been written years ago that yeah. are selling yeah, today. Yeah. The beauty also is that the good thing about the online environment is that a book on Amazon can stay on Amazon for decades. Hundred percent. Yeah, can yeah. stay. I mean, even when you're gone, it will still be there, and your people yeah. will be getting, they'll be getting much, but they'll be getting something. Yeah. I really wanted to talk about your perspective on like writing the book because I think the, those behind the scenes of like how those things yeah. work are, are very cool. What I want my students and, and young professionals to get from that is that you've leveraged off of your sort of your technical knowledge. It's not as though your technical knowledge isn't there or you're not using it or it's not valuable or whatever the case is, but you've gone so much broader than that and that requires 
different skills. You're still, yeah. as you say, you're still learning um, mm-hmm. and you're still, you know, you're, you're, you're going to writing courses and you're picking up different skills and mm-hmm. you're finding ways to put them together. Yeah. It's not like, well, I write in my spare time and, you know, it's not like you're writing vampire novels and you're, yeah, <laughs> which, yeah. which would probably make more money. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like you probably make more money. Um, <laughs> vampire CFOs. Although some of them kind of are, I suppose. A lot of, you know, a lot of students I speak to when you kind of talk, they think about their career trajectory is very much what you said you didn't want. But that's kind of the impression you have. I'm going to qualify as a CA. I'm going to have a corner office. And the best that I can hope for is like climbing the corporate ladder. But it's a very narrow view. Whereas like what I love about this is, you know, just opening up and broadening the possibilities of what you can do with your life. Mm-hmm. The qualification and the, 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 you know, the studying is the base and it's a foundation and it's a valuable yeah. one to leverage off, but you can take yeah. something completely different, Yeah, you know, yeah. and like you say, your hobby and who knows what you can put together, you know, to, yeah. to create something that you love doing and, yeah. you know, you can finance your yacht with eventually. Yeah. So yeah. by book number 10, you should be, you should be at least on a small little speedboat somewhere. <laughs> I love a raft. <laughs> little little raft a little raft awesome so yeah have have an awesome day further and uh keep in touch with your next exciting project and uh when you do buy your yacht Ooh. i expect a uh i expect an invite 